Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Edition number two on the day, winter weather update here. Taking a look at things right now. We got some showers streaming across eastern Oregon, Washington. Those could drop some quick accumulations of snowfall all the way through Idaho and some of Montana as we go through tonight and on in through tomorrow morning. Convergent zone across some of the Puget Sound. Some showers moving in the Oregon Cascades and the Washington coast as we speak. But the big weather story is the Arctic air on the move here. It's going to be pushing down as we go on in towards early next week, bringing a much colder air mass across Pacific Northwest. And then we are going to bring a Pacific Ocean storm system back into the West Coast of North America. The track on that one, as you can imagine, is going to determine where the biggest impacts are. We're going to dive into some of those details and take a look at the latest in the weather models here in a moment. First of all, looking at the top of the radar up close, and you can see some of the showers in the coastline, cascades, again, across some of the higher terrain, some snowfall accumulations, and there is better chance for snow if you get east of the mountains there. And you can kind of see some of these bands and pushing in towards the Blue Mountains, off and on there for Walla Walla also. And if you want a nice, affordable home weather station, help support the channel, click on the link down below to save 10% off. Great smartphone app, very fun station, lightning detection system with it as well. Now, take a look at Portland, starting to pay attention to what is coming as we go through next week. Chance of snow and freezing rain. Right now, Portland's got better odds at some disruptive winter weather than Seattle right now, but we have to watch the track closely. Some of the models are showing some of that snowfall getting up towards the Puget Sound as well. So this is going to be trickier, folks, because if you live down there across some of the Portland metro or in towards the gorge, you know how stubborn that cold air can be, and there's going to be a lot of it around with some strong east winds as the system moves towards the coastline. I'll show you that here in a moment. Taking a look down towards Medford, you can see the timeline you are talking about the storm here as we go on in through Thursday, Friday, and beyond. Then we're going to get a pattern change most likely after that and turn things a bit warmer, but we could be bringing some rainy conditions here across the region. And this is what I talked about a little bit here. This is as we go through the evening tonight. You can see we're at 630 right now. So you can see Lewiston, Kellogg's right there. Some of the snow squalls moving across the area there. You can get some of the low visibilities with that and some gusty winds blowing snow and the icy road. So watch out for that. And this is what I showed this morning. So this is last year, January of 2024. If you notice, the water here is relatively warm across the equatorial Pacific. And if we scroll all the way to January of this year, you can see we're cooler across the equatorial Pacific. That is what La Nina is. We're not looking at the temperature anomaly map here. We're looking at the actual sea surface temperatures here. So when you cool that down, you change up the dynamics there across the ocean, which in turn, the heat transfer changes, Rossby wave configuration, ridges and troughs all across the planet. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense there. And you can kind of see it in the anomaly map there. We're probably going to be in a La Nina when all is said and done. And again, pretty chilly there across some of the equatorial regions. There, not a strong El Nino or anything like that, but yeah, you can definitely see the cooler than normal water across the equatorial Pacific. So now what is to come? So we got the European Ensemble mean 18Z. This is hot off the presses on the left. We got the European Artificial Intelligence 500 millibars here on the right 18Z hot off the presses as well. So here we go. This little lobe right there. That's going to be the kind of leading edge of the Arctic air here as we go on in through the day. Monday, ridge is configured across some Alaska, across northern British Columbia, bringing that cold north flow back down into the region. And then the interesting part is here, this development of this system right off our coastline there. Where is this one going to go? The GFS wants it further south. The European is being a bit more north with that, and that's bringing precipitation a bit further north with it as well. So that, uh, wherever that thing goes, is going to have the biggest impacts, as I mentioned earlier. Now, if we take a look at the European versus the GFS on the right, 18Z data from both models hot off the presses, put this into motion and watch. See these reds moving down across Pacific Northwest? That is very dry, cold Arctic air. Look at it flow all the way out across the ocean areas and engulf the Pacific Northwest. We start to get some of that moisture trying to push in there. It's going to have a hard time initially, it looks like. And then we bring the system towards the coastline. And we got the European right into Oregon there. You can see the moisture moving a bit further north. The GFS is further south with this feature and that moisture just maybe clipping Portland there. And again, so it's a model disagreement between the European and the GFS. Now, if we take a look at the artificial intelligence, let me back this up and you can see how it does include some of Seattle and the Puget Sound there. So this is, you know, some big discrepancies between the European and the GFS on the track of this low. And then of course we have to deal with the freezing rain prospect because when this low pressure system is coming in, it's gonna be dragging out some cold air. These easterlies are gonna be blasting through the gorge, reinforcing some of that lower level, lower level cold air. More on that here in a moment as the storm system approaches as we go through Wednesday night into Thursday. 
And if you look at the dew points there, you, know, you start spreading that moisture back up over that, you're going to get that evaporative cooling up the daytime highs. Do happen to get up into the mid 30s, they're going to drop back down quickly and probably become snow if the storm is far enough north for Seattle and for Portland. So if we look at the GFS here, let's uh, closer look at things. And there's the Arctic air mass kind of hanging down across Pacific Northwest. Look at it get all the way down across Oregon. Precipitation moving into California, and then the low pressure system approaches the California Oregon border. And you see GFS is just skirting portions of the Portland metro here. A little bit of freezing rain showing up there as well. But if this system does take a more northerly track, you're probably going to start to include uh, Portland for freezing rain potential. Then, of course, some of uh, southwest Washington with some of the snowfall potential there. So you can see the GFS keeps that mainly off to the south. And then this next system, it may be initially cold enough still around where it will briefly start a snowfall and maybe some of southwest bc will hold on a bit longer again depending on the track of this one as well but that's way off in the future we're not going to worry about that one just yet one thing at a time and i do want to kind of wrap things up as far as what is going on tonight you see the convergent zone across some of the south sound some of these snow bands moving across eastern oregon idaho montana washington and then we keep some of these showers around as we go through the day tomorrow but it looks like they are definitely on the lighter side and then we can kind of see the arctic front dropping down across alberta towards canada there as the arctic air starts to sweep across pacific northwest as we go through the day on Monday. So if we look at the 18Z European model, very interesting look at things here with the 100 meter wind speeds. Look at the Fraser River outflow get going on the day Monday. Okanagan River out of the North Purcell Trench. Cold air swooping across Pacific Northwest. You're definitely going to feel the chill in the atmosphere. And look at this just rush out all the way across the Pacific Ocean. Next storm system starts to arrive. And look at these easterlies being pulled through the Stampede Gap. The sea level gap there right on the Washington Oregon border known as the Gorge. The Vista House is in there. There's the Portland Metro. And then this system starts to burrow in here. And look at some of these wind speeds through the gorge. You can imagine if this lines up perfectly, you get some really strong winds through the gorge there, all the way out across the coastal areas. Again, the Stampede Gap out of the east as well, and then it starts to spread moisture back up over the area. And look at that little low right there hanging right off the coastline. Big time battle between warm, moist Pacific Ocean system and some much colder air, especially across the interior and perhaps getting pulled back out for Portland there. You could get a freezing rain event out of this one. We'll see how that trends here over the next few days, but interesting looking stuff right there. And the cold air is stubborn. It wants to hang around longer than the models say it will. I did a little diagram here for you. You can pretend like this is the Portland Metro and this is the cold air coming through the sea level gap, which is the gorge and the Washington, Oregon border. Warm air trying to override that. Lower levels stay cold. Freezing rain falls into it and you can get some pretty extreme icing events down there in the Portland Metro. So taking a look at the national blend of models, take a look at this. A couple of days below zero Fahrenheit on the latest run here. Got a little bit colder and a, for a while, you know, all the way on in through what, Saturday? Probably struggling to get above freezing for Spokane, chilly overnight lows. Seattle, probably getting up into the 30s here, but look at these overnight lows down towards 20, and which means some of the surrounding areas are gonna be getting down to, towards the teens. There's Payne Field at 19. Bellingham, look at this, some teens out there with the gusty outflow winds as well. It's gonna feel very cold. We are not done with winter yet here, folks. And Portland International, something similar here as well. Now, taking a look at the National Planet Model. So here we go with that system. Uh, initially, the moisture moving into California, spreading north up across portions of Oregon, and then tries to clip some of Southwest Washington. Well, it does more than clip some of Southwest Washington, but tries to get up towards Seattle as well as we go on in through the day Thursday. So yeah, right on the borderline here for Seattle. Lots to watch over the next few days. Model's been bouncing back and forth with just how far north this moisture is going to get. And if we take a look at the daily two meter minimum temperatures, now, this is for tomorrow Sunday. You can see Seattle. And there's Portland down here. Get east of the mountains and across the Cascades. It is definitely much colder. You'll feel it if you're going back and forth from the west side to the east side. There's Monday morning, Tuesday, Wednesday. I mean, look at Tuesday morning. Spokane, you're talking about minus one Fahrenheit there and a lot of single digits, some below zero temperatures out there, some teens showing up for western Washington, western Oregon. And you go through Wednesday, still very cold. There's Thursday, still cold. And then Friday, we start with this transition here of the system moving into the west coast of North America. And here's the six to 10 day kind of below average signal as we go through February 18th. Here's the six to 10 day precipitation, still above normal. Eight to 14 day and eight to 14 day precipitation outlook as well. Well, some of the models off in Fantasyland are showing potential for atmospheric river and additional wet systems into the Pacific Northwest. So take a look at the drought monitor. I had to share this because if you look, look at Washington is 
almost entirely drought free, maybe just clipped by the little tiny bit of moderate drought across from the northeast Oregon and western Washington, western Oregon do have a little bit of abnormally dry, a little bit wor more worrisome drought conditions out here across portions of Montana and Idaho. But they did get some pretty intense snowfall with this last round, which will help out immensely with some of these drought conditions. And you can see the drought now taking hold of portions of some of south, the southwest USA. Some exceptional droughts been introduced portions of Nevada and Arizona. If we look at avalanche.org, check before you go. It's a great website. You can click on any one of these individual locations and get all kinds of data. It tells you snow levels and avalanche danger. It shows pictures and it shows reach, recent avalanches and whatnot. And you can see across the Mount Idaho here, there is some considerable avalanche danger. And you can see Mount Hood not showing too much right now. Maybe some uh, moderate there across the Oregon Cascades also. And if we look at the snowpack across western Washington, not too great here. 73, 74. Eh, we're not doing too hot. We're below normal. It did get a little bit better across portions of Montana. Still a little bit below normal. But Portland, or not Portland, but Oregon here. Portland doesn't have any snow on the ground right now, although they have been seeing some flakes. But you can see that we are above normal for much of Oregon as far as snowfall is concerned. So hopefully we can start to correct this as we go on in towards March and whatnot. And this is the uh, the European. This is February 1st forecast. We are in La Nina right now. But look at this. We want to start climbing back out as we go through the summer. Are we headed towards another El Nino? Who knows? Um, but yeah, they're it's showing a little bit of that potential here. Maybe we'll go for a neutral year next time or whatnot. But that's something we'll be watching as we scroll off in towards the summertime months. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'll kick this video out. Hope you guys are having a good night. I will do my normal briefing tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.